anytime you see mortar like this, you got to try to get as much off as possible to the point where all the loose is off. If that does, it's too hard to get off, we'll, we'll make a good site for it. If the mortar is coming off in pieces, just try to get all the pieces off. That is usually laid on the GC, the construction manager, and their guys. They did it, let them clean it up. Uh, 250 GC, anytime it's used for detail work, uh, the best way to deal with 250 GC uh, for protection board is to use 2450 protection board. Now, basically what that is, you know those election signs you see? The board's the same. All right, we expect that the wall will crush the board, but the board won't be breached or penetrated. Uh, so we dump that asphalt board, it's not needed, and it shouldn't come, really come into contact with 250 GC, although the board's probably going to take 20 years, but you, know, you won't see any damage here. But on roofing jobs, keep that board completely off the job with 250 GC. We use it for hot rubber. Uh, 250 GC, uh, let's say uh, the, board, the 250 GC is coming out here, and, and the plastic board is only coming out six inches. A way to protect 250 GC is just take a three to 10 mil poly sheet, something that's meltable with a torch because the 250 will not melt with heat. It just won't. You just torch that poly off ever so slightly. And then you can take your uh, epoxy and put it on the 250 GC. As a, the epoxy will stick to 250. You run it down over the, from the 250 down onto the concrete about two inches. So you completely covered it, you throw silica sand in there, come back the next day, and you can prime it, you can do whatever you want, and then the hot rubber goes right on top of it. Also, you can do it vice versa. So if you forgot the 250, it hots first, put the epoxy on the hot, at least four to six inches, run it down over the pot to the concrete, as long as the 250 hits that concrete, uh, the epoxy hits the concrete, you're fine, sand it, next day 250 over top of that. You're good. Upturns on walls. A lot of times you're going to see the drawings where it shows an upturn on a wall. And if you're not watching, you just think that, hey, it's a standard detail. So six inches up the wall, the guys with the squeegees come along, hey, I've done it too. Not watching. And come down here, get those weave holes. That wall was affixed here as an interior wall. Of course, they'd have to insulate it. The water rides up and travels in the building. If you block the weep holes, you have to be careful of these weep holes. Don't block them. Just ride the hot rubber up under that you know, cup of protection, prime the epoxy primer on the 250GC, sand it, wait till it dries, prime the shit out of everything, carry the hot right up to the wall. Don't block that. And you'll always be safe. <coughs> Hot rubber on the windows, again, we don't have a specification, we're not sure, we're probably doing an upturn. <clears throat> the window design, this is where we catch them. The window designs, now that what they've done is they've sealed the window, but that's all they've done. So who's responsible now for the tie-in from here to the hot? This is a huge issue. The reason I say that, this deck's gonna be built up, and you get torrential rains, a hurricane, something like that, with five inches of rain or more per hour, which you have had here. <coughs> what happens, the water can run right up here. Right? So, I always watch this area, who's responsible. A lot of times what I'll do is I would always suggest that before the window's placed in there, you place a, a peel and stick type of uh, adhesive back air barrier, leave the paper on it, just just take a knife and thinly slice the paper on the back so you got about one inch, one and a half inch exposed. Peel it off, prime it all up, and it tucks just under this cap. It saves your ass in the future because if you ever fuck up on your upturn, you've got this membrane to cover your butt. So the hot rubber comes up and then that peeling stick comes right over the hot. 15, 20, 30 minutes later, it's great. And it's only a suggestion. Corners. See what we're doing? We're trying to stay down here. So we've got 250 GC in the corner, but I always look, when you guys start cutting this out, you're gonna have mortar down there. So just be careful of your knife when you're cutting. If it gets too tricky, take a quick trigger torch. Your Home Depot here has something called Home Depot. Do you have Lowe's here? 
Yeah. Lowe's has one too, it's a little better. It's called the TS8000. It's a quick trigger torus that uses mat gas or propylene gas instead of propane. Much hotter, uh, the torch is a little bigger. And what you do is you take uh, an HB knife, which Lowe's and home people have, that's the thicker razor knife with a foreign blade on it, torch it until it gets red hot. Right. As you lift your board, if your knife gets dull, that's what I do. I don't just keep swapping blades all the time. We don't know what's going on here. You know. Uh, you know, we don't know if this was a mistake. Or it's a healthy sleeve. It Who knows what it is. So let's just say that you got any pipes sticking out here? It's supposed to look like that. That looks electrical to me, so light stands, right? So what you do is uh, if there's a pipe in here and it's hard plastic, and the hard plastic might say resistant to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's what bullshit. That's all gone in the US unless it's Chinese. <laughs> Uh, the hot rubber, you can take that plastic conduit, the hard plastic now from Texas, take it, stir your 400 degree hot rubber, peel it off, and you can still use it. That's how resistant it is. So what you do is you're going to, uh, and when you're priming metal or plastic up with the buckets of primer, always rag wipe it. Don't try to brush it on, don't try to spray it, take a rag, put big green gloves on. Tremble's got gloves that go up to here now. Let me just take my rag, dip it in, and I rag wipe plastic or rag wipe metal. Hot rubber will stick five times better if you do that. If you try to brush it on and it gets too thick, now the hot rubber's new substrate is the primer. The primer's too thick. The primer's soft. It's too thick. Okay, so let's continue up. Just take a look. If you were a guy doing the cocking and sealant, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop right there, or are you going to stop down there? You're going to stop down there, and I've seen sealants come in contact with hot rubberized membranes. Frickin' 10W30 oil like this, just running down the drains because they weren't compatible. So a lot of times when I look at this, I'm always going to ask, you know, what, what is it? Is it going to be Dow? Is it going to be Tremco? <clears throat> You're going to take, because there's wheat poles here, there's no upturn here. Yeah. See that? So you can't, you can't do an upturn back there. I don't know what, the, what these weep holes are really taking care of. I haven't seen the construction on the inside yet, but I certainly don't want to cover the weep holes and find out the bricks full of water and spill it into the residential. Here's a question for you too. On these uh, porous substrates, CMU, block, brick, we've always been taught that it needs to be parched before you actually put waterproofing over the top of it. It's preferable. Why? Because they always fill up with the water. And I don't care if they fill them with concrete or not. The cement they pour into the hollow right. is usually uh, crap that somebody else didn't want. It's uncontrolled cement. There'll be, there'll be pockets, there'll be breaches. And the porous block is famous for sucking the water. Okay. Especially for the river. But if we're not going up and turning up on that because of the weep holes, then it doesn't need to be parched. Once you see a weep hole, you have to ask questions. Now, right. if they say, well, we filled this, don't believe it. Don't believe it. I guarantee you they just went. Right. And I've seen it too many times where the guys have told me, well, we poured it in from the top. I run my ground penetrating radar over it, and none of it come down through the hollows. Those damn bricks are offset. Right. And if the guy forgets, say he builds a course of bricks, and he fills it, and he sees it, and the next guy comes along, maybe he's sick the next day. The next guy comes along, he forgets to fill this course. Right? They're just going to keep building, and then they'll fill this. Well, the cement won't run down more than big of this. <clears throat> so you get these big uh, hollows. Uh, so that, that there needs to be addressed, right? We need to know what's sealing. We have to ask questions. Because I just don't want to find out if some Taiwanese, you know, 400 gram per liter solvent sealant that comes down on the hot rubber melts everything. Careful. Obviously, these are decorative. You know, they may not want anything on stuff on there. But once you see a weep hole again, it's the same condition. Door thresholds. We have those kind of things. There's probably a spec somewhere. So what do they expect? Are we going to go up over the door threshold? Well, take a good look at this. 
Where's that hot going to terminate? You know, a lot of times what I do is I take the hot to my specification. And if there isn't one, they might just say, get your laptop out and draw it. <laughs> take the hot normally up like this, and you take it across. The reason I use the hot rubber as a gasket for the threshold plate, right? Just to stop the water from going in. Remember, if you're finished spray, it's going to be right here. All that water is going to want to hit the door. And I, I can tell there's a pretty good slope here. Just because there's a slope on the concrete deck doesn't mean you're going to create a proper slope up here. For all we know, if you go on this one, they're finished. So the deck's fine for us. So, now, right here, no waterproof. So the chances are they might just want to cock this. We don't know. Do they want our waterproof to stop here? Do they have another design, another membrane for the threshold? Is it Dow sealants coming in? You know? So we need to ask questions there. It's not a hard fix. Even if we stop the hot rubber up here, it's still not a hard fix. If they turn around and tell us later, uh, we're going to use somebody else, then what happens is you've got a patrimonial epoxy primer over the hot rubber and sand it, just so they don't have a problem. But we don't have to draw that. That's their issue. If you stop your hot and you're out of here, it's their issue. It's not ours. Well, the problem is the hot can't get under here. Chances are there's going to be a sealant coming around from the inside on the threshold plate coming out like this. So we need to make sure that that sealant's compatible with the, the hot rubberized membrane. Okay, next one. The say we've got to watch out is because of all of a sudden we find out we're putting uh, ceramic or whatever porcelain tile out here. The adhesive manufacturer as soon as they see hot rubber, they're scraping it off. So we just got to be careful what they're going to do with it. I always tell them, don't scrape it off. Uh, to leave the hot rubber. And the way to protect hot rubber, now, your job right site here, I mean, they're going to damp. Uh, for something like this, if we find out they're going to put a tile, you know, use that tile system here, in order to protect the hot rubber, and get this repaired, you would probably end up putting poly sheet, just any old plastic sheet on the hot, because you can torch that stuff on. Just in case they say run your, your hot rubber all the way, or the tile manufacturer says, look, you got to tie into your hot, we want to keep it neat. Uh, so then what you do with the poly sheet is you torch it, the turn to epoxy primer two inches onto the concrete, run it over the hot, and then their tile and sand it. Their tile is will stick to our epoxy. The problem is you can't get that hot like this. So, so the hot is left like that. Yeah. Just made a dam. They're going to get off and pissed off. Right. They get this wrong. You've got the hot rubber dam. Uh, is this hot rubber or 250? We, uh, we went over it with 250. Yeah. We went 12 inches around the pool shell with hot rubber. Okay. And then we took the epoxy over that. Okay, so and this... And then, then 250 over the top so that they could get this wall in place. And then what's the outer... What, what's right here? 250. 250's here, so you were... We need to put hot over the top. Need to put hot. That's 250. Over the top of the uh, epoxy. Yep. Right? So this stuff's got to be... The epoxy won't stick to that. It has to be really cleaned well. Solve and wipe it, right? Yep. And then take the epoxy on the 250. But always remember, run the epoxy down onto the concrete. So you stop the lip edge of the 250 and uh, sand it, and your no issues. You don't have any issues with that. Uh, electrical conduits, uh, or sorry, a plug. Want to look at one of these drains again? <laughs> oh yeah, let's look at this. <laughs> All right, so drain details. This is uh, supposed to be a clamping ring design. So do you see that slope? Right there? That slope is the same as what the concrete. This this thing is supposed to be level with the concrete. And the drain is set into the concrete. See the distance from here to here? Right there. It could be an eighth of an inch. That's the distance this drain is supposed to be set into the concrete. So anytime you see a drain, some of them are sloped a little more and these are wider. But whatever the distance is from here to here, that's the depth. Once the plumber, once you tell that to a plumber without giving them uh, 
today it's one sixteenth of an inch deep because you got this bottle of drain. Uh, just look at the drain rate. That's the depth of the drain. Um, in this particular case, because the drain's damaged, it's always advisable to chip it out on a slope starting 12 inches back and then have, a, uh, have the mortar repair it or epoxy repair it so we have a nice even slope. The other uh, thing we can do is run the hot rubberized membrane over the edge into the clamp and right down. See this? You see this? I run the hot rubber here. I might even run the hot rubber here. Well, it doesn't all go down there, so obviously we've got it plugged up. Uh, your bolts are going to be uh, Home Depot Lowe's, whatever you can do. Pull these bolts, don't lose them, right? It's just a pain in the ass going out buying more. Uh, they do sell these at Lowe's and Home Depot, so. But you want to put a temporary bolt in there, and I always keep them real high, like six inches, only because if you use a smaller one, uh, you'll bury the whole thing. You won't see it. So I use the bigger ones, and uh, if they come out later after the hot rubber, fine. If they don't, just give it a little heat, and then yank them out. And then what's going to happen is uh, uh, the hot is here. It's going to be clamped down. Now, normally with hot rubber, you're putting a neoprene, a last mare type sheet in the hot rubber. Well, this design doesn't, it's not conducive to that. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take, uh, cut the neoprene, to this diameter, and don't be neat, right? Don't be neat, just cut it. If it looks like shit, I'm happy, as long as we got this covered. <clears throat> so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put hot rubber. You might have to paint brush it in. You're gonna take that round diameter disc, and you're going to, you're going to uh, heat the top of the bolts. And you're gonna pop it, put it down inside, or you're gonna pull the bolts out, Keep the bottoms of the bolts and put them back in again. See what I mean? Just pop it through the neoprene sheet. Now you got the neoprene covering the whole drain. These drains aren't active. I can, I can just tell by looking at it. What you can do is just keep the neoprene there. Just to block all the water from going down. You'll take a knife later on and you're just gonna cut. And you're gonna, you're gonna push the neoprene down. What you're gonna do is take a knife and you're gonna cut it and then you're gonna push it down. If the neoprene's going across like that, and you cut a circle there, heat it, just heat it under here, and the neoprene sheet will then turn into butter. It'll start to conform and melt down into the hot. See what I mean? Three May fabric system now. The hot rubber on the main deck uh, is now going to come to the drain. It's got Remay fabric into it. A lot of times what I do is I'll just take the hot rubber, I'll just continue what's here. I'll make sure all this hot rubber comes up over the side. And then this hot rubber here is going to come down and just lip over top of it. But what we need to find out is what the uh, deal is with the uh, drain screen. So if it's a perforated riser, they're going to grout this back in. All that water is going to run into the perforated riser. That makes our hot rubber kind of redundant. But we still need it down there just to follow the our codes. My preference is always to chip back and have it absolutely repaired as a slope. That is always the preference. Always. So does this job call for flex, flex slash? So a neoprene sheet. Neoprene sheet, yeah. Neoprene, yeah. That neoprene sheet from uh, Hydrotech, because we're all born bred Hydrotech yeah, from years back. Same. And, uh, and, and all the hot rubber, I've used them all. So the Flex Flash you in, Tremco's elastomeric sheet, all those sheets are, are uh, they're a coated sheet. They're all the same now, there's no difference. And, and, and the details are the same. But, but you gotta learn some tricks. You know, in this industry, you know, just because we tell you it's a standard six inch upturn, you don't have six inches here. Now we have to be smart. So the smart way to do it is take the neoprene. Let's say it's 12 inches wide, that sheet. You got hot rubber coming up like that. You got to put uh, 10 inches on the floor. You only need a two inch upturn. That's all you need. And then your remake fabric and everything comes over top. And then what you do is you end up covering this every sheet of hot rubber. If you have the opportunity, you can use a termination bar. And take the, the remade fabric, reinforced hot rubber, up over the neoprene, and carry it over the, over the top. Over the so now your neoprene has been, been embedded in remade fabric reinforcement. That prevents uh, rippling or fish mouths or whatever. Yeah. 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 Because we put a termination 
bar in there. You're gonna, you're gonna break it. It's gonna pop out. Yeah, it's gonna pop out. Okay. okay. So that's what I do. I just take the neoprene sheet instead of like this. Now it's like this. Most of it's on the floor. Two inches and ten inches. I mean, yeah. if you if you live on the floor, you know how to put the ten inches on the floor, right? If you if you cut it on half, you can use it two by four. Yeah. Yeah. Four inches on the floor. Cut the neoprene dead, really, for something like that. Okay. Standing on, on the roofing, it'd be a different story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the one from this one. I don't know if we can use the turn bar right here, but we've got the same, same, same thing. See the sheet flashing? Who did the sheet flashing under there? That, that, that was before. That was were, before. Well, that sheet flashing should always be extended. Right? Yeah. Hot rubber up, sheet flashing down over the hot rubber. It's now a roof shingle. Yeah. Not under the hot rubber. This is not designed for heavy. Yeah. I design a lot of things to hurricane zones. You know, let's face it, I mean, it's, it's, it's not Galveston. So, but I don't care. Uh, pretty close to it. Yeah, it's pretty damn close, isn't it? So, we always do that. You know, we always watch these designs. I always like that, that uh, air barrier or internal sheet to be extended. You know, it looks like crap. It's still better than nothing. Turn the hot up, take the sheet, and you're not, And that sheet that's under there is now your protection. Yep. I guess the brick would be something a little bit different because you got weep holes in the brick. You're yeah. probably not going to turn that up either. You're probably just going to go right into the no. 250 on the horizontal. Anytime you have masonry, and I don't know exactly what the mortar design is. Remember, there's about 500 different designs for the uh, for masonry mortar now. Latex modified, acrylic modified, there's epoxy modified now. Uh, some of it's porous, some of it is not porous. So what happens is, let's say water fills up in here, you know, in the cap. <clears throat> and we don't know what's behind there. I didn't take any pictures. So if there's blockages, if you turn the hot rubber up, even if there's not a weep hole, chances are, certain jobs, the water becomes saturated with water as the water rises to knock your hot right off. And I've seen it happen in less than 30 days. So the, the safe game is just what you've done. You've already waterproofed it. Keep the hot rubber flat anytime you see this. Flat. Especially if you see that. Stay away. <laughs> Let that water run. Hey, all what is on the top of the primary is cold, but I the eggs one on the concrete. Well, I'm getting a good reading. Good? Yep. It's in the 30s. It's usually considered excellent. Okay. I'll need a... Uh... Of course, that's the old man's turn. to soak and the reading goes up. The concrete's too dense. I mean, it's too smooth. The reading starts to drop. And we've got another
drop. What up? So what does that what does that mean? The concrete's very dense. You don't have the pillories for the pipe to walk into. Yeah. Now you know why they're gas primers? Just for that reason. So we just accept this based on it being a small area. You got a lot of shit. Deck, we're definitely going to have to prep it. So, if you guys track blast, shot blast, do anything like that, yeah. did you put in for the bit on this? Don't do anything until uh, you put this under the microscope. It's nice. We've got to concentrate on this deck. Once I see that, anything to do with Texas that I have scheduled is off the table. So, we did chipping hammer and I need small pieces of concrete. One, two, three, just three spots. Not enough to do a lot of okay. damage. Under the microscope, there could be a lithium here. We gotta find out. I mean, we could just ask if you see if you use it. Do you trust, do you trust them though? <laughs> no, if I said to him, you have type 2 fly ash approaching 28%, he might just say, no. right? That's another problem. Yeah. Cut the loose material off. You don't want it thick at all. Have you guys had this before? Yep. Yeah, you don't want it too thick. No, I don't want it too thick. Okay. I don't want it. Yep.
remake coming up like that? Yeah. The hot rubber's already cold. Oh, yeah. Okay. The other problem is you got to not squeegee. No, not squeegees allowed with hot rubber. You can't control the thickness. Not squeegees. See the thin areas? Yeah. It's cold like that. Flat squeegees only. It stays hotter for twice as long. This here will cool the membrane down so fast. Okay. All right, so... Uh, and the other thing with this, you're gonna need two squeegees. Cut this one here and here for beginners. Big ones for people with experience. The little ones are great if I have to do this. Okay. Uh, go ahead and uh, just pour a little bit of hot rubber right here. Right here. Just a little bit all the way. Not five gallons. Five gallons go 17 feet, enough to do the remake. So, all right. Okay, right here. Good. Go, go. No, no, cut it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Con esto lo apunto más bien allí. Keep your feet moving. Okay, while the guy's grooming, another guy. Okay, and then most guys take a knife and they cut it. So they stay away from the hot rubber. Now, if you didn't want to cut it, what you do is you stop the, the remake here. Back Pull back, but the guy doesn't want to stand on the rubber. Watch. Yeah. Open, yes, sir. Remember that remade there by at least eight inches. Uh, yeah. Because you don't know where the end is. Uh,